do you have books or a set of books that you want to just read quickly and answer questions based on the material in the books? Or do you have documents, personal or business that you want to get insights from? You may have heard that chat GPT can help you out with that. The trouble with chat GPT is that it has a word limit. If you copy and paste a whole book or a large document into the chat GPT window, you will get an error that you're above the token limit. Well, my friend, there is a workaround around this. It's sort of kind of technical. Here's a step-by-step -step process on how to get around the token limit and chat with thousands of PDFs all at once if you want. Come and let me show you. You will need four tools. The first tool is a free PyCon account. PyCon is a company that offers vector-based databases. With the vector-based database, you upload your book. The book is broken down into small, tiny chunks that then can be quizzed and queried with ChatGPT easily. Tool number two is an open AI account with either free credits or a linked credit and debit card. Unfortunately, we'll be using the API. As such, the free version of ChatGPT won't work. However, don't worry, it won't cost you much. If you chat with as many PDFs as you can, it will probably cost you around $5 a month. The third tool is GPT-4 Chatbot app available on free on GitHub. This is an open source project that stitches together OpenAI and Pinecon. It uses Langchain, a Python framework on the backside and uses Node.js on the front end. Tool number four is Visual Studio Code. Now, you can use any IDE you want. Visual Studio Code happens to be my favorite. So the GPT-4 All Chatbot app comes uncompiled. As such, we're going to use Visual Studio Code to compile the app and get it ready for use. And now, follow me for a quick run through of how to get set up. The first thing to do is go to pinecon.io. So you can either sign up for a free account or log in. As I already have an account, I'm just going to log in. An important thing about Pinecon, there's high demand for Pinecon vector-based databases. As such, ever so often, you may be added to a waiting list and told to wait. Don't worry, usually they process the waiting list pretty fast. It will not take you more than 30 minutes before you have a free Pinecon account ready to use. Once your Pinecon account has been approved, it's time to create a new index. So click on Create Index. Give it any name you want. Mine, I'll call it PDF Chat. Very important. The dimension you need to specify here is 1536. Leave it as cosine, side. And then I prefer to pick P1 for faster queries just to make things a little bit faster. Then click on Create Index. And just like that, your index will be created. Now that you've set up your Pinecon account, time to set up our OpenAI account. Steal your browser, open a new tab, go to openai.com. If you've never used OpenAI, then click on the sign up button. By signing up, you'll get $5 worth of free credit and that will be more than enough to experiment. If you already have an account like me, all you have to do is just log in. As I have already logged in, I'm just going to click on the API button and that will take me to the API page. If you signed up and you've already used up your free credits, the thing you'll have to do is you'll have to link a debit card or a credit card. To link a debit or credit card, click on the icon with your name over here, then go to Manage Accounts. Under Manage Accounts, go to Billing. Under Billing, click on the Payment Methods. Under Payment Methods, add a payment method. As you can see, I've already added my card, but sure enough, if you haven't added a card, you can easily add your card over here. The next step, step number three, is to download the GPT-4 chatbot app. Link to this chatbot app is in the description below. All you have to do is copy the link and open a new tab, paste the link there. This will take you to the GitHub page. Click on the code icon and download the zip file. It's a pretty small file and it will be open in no time. Once you have the file downloaded, you can open it in your file manager. Then click on extract. Once you've extracted it, you can copy the file and move it to your favorite folder. I like moving mine to the document folder. The next step is to download Visual Studio Code. Still in your browser, go to the Visual Studio Code and choose the version that's compatible with the operating system you're using. 
I've already downloaded mine. Now, once you've installed Visual Studio Code, it's time to open the GPT-4 chatbot app using the Visual Studio Code. So I'll just open Visual Studio Code. Click on the Explorer. File. Open folder. Navigate to my documents folder. Click on GPT-4 PDF chatbot app and open it. Right away it's here. Next is to open readme.md file and go through the instructions there step by step. First important instruction is to run npm install yarn g. This is a command that you need to run. The trouble with this command is that you need to have node.js installed on your system. Before you run this command, go back to your browser, open a new Choose the version that's compatible with your OS and just download it. In my case, I'm using Mac OS, the ARM version. So I'll download it and install it. Once you've installed Node.js, go back to Visual Studio Code. Toggle the terminal button up here from Visual Studio Code. Paste the command and run it. We're getting errors because we need to run the command with administrator rights. And just add sudo in front of the command and you'll be prompted to input your password. To input your password, it will run and MPL YAN will be installed. Step number three, the next important step is to get the .env file set up. So you're going to look for env, that example file, and just copy it, then paste it over there. Then I want you to rename it by deleting all this so that it's only named .env. Open the .env file. And you'll see it requires you to input your OpenAI API keys, your Pinecone API key, your Pinecone environment, and your Pinecone index name. So let's start with the Open API key. Back to your browser, back to OpenAI, click on your name, click View API keys. There, you're going to create a new secret key. You can call it GPT4 chat key. Create the secret key, copy that key, go back to Visual Studio Code and paste the key in the root end. Back to your browser, go to Pinecone, and now what you're looking for is the API key for your Pinecone. So click on the API keys button, copy the API key, back to Visual Studio Code, make sure there's no space. Then paste your API key. Now the Pinecore environment, back to your browser, indexes, click on your index. The environment is here, US West 4 Gypsy. Copy it, back to your Visual Studio Code, paste the environment. Your index name, back to the browser. Our index name is PDF Chat. So you're just going to copy this, whatever you've named your index, and paste it there. Make sure it's in the same line. Once you're done, just CMD S or Control S to save it. And you have your .n file set up. Once you've set up your .n file, step number four and step number five are not that important right now. But basically it's changing your namespace and it's going to a folder name utils, make change .ts and altering your prompt. For now, we'll just leave it the way it is. The next important step is to create a folder called docs where you're going to input the PDF files that you want to query. So it's on our left sidebar, create new folder and name it docs. Once you've named that folder docs, we're going to look for a bunch of PDF files and place them there. So I have two PDF files here, one book called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins and the other one called Winning by Tim Grover. These are like super hardcore motivational books. If you want to know more about hardcore motivational books, check out our video on the best hardcore motivational books. Link is in the description below. Copy the PDFs. Then we can go to our GPT folder, which is under the docs where we copied it. Look for that docs folder that you just created and paste these two PDFs. You can see the two PDFs appear here. But remember, you paste any documents you want. After we do that, we need to ingest the PDFs into our Pinecone database. 
We do that by running the command npm run ingest. Depending on how large your file is, this can take quite some time. So you might have to leave it and let it run, then check it after you're done. Now, something else is likely to happen. When you run this command, you're likely to get a bunch of errors. Here are a few that I got during my first run. Error number one that I found was the error that the number of vectors in Pinecon index does not fit the number created by ChatGPT. So ChatGPT uses 1536 vectors. What you'll have to do is go back to your Pinecon index, delete this particular index and create a new index where you specify the dimensions as 1536 and that will solve your problem. Another error that I found in the process was the error that NPM does not exist. If you find this error, then what you need to do, you need to go back to your, to your browser, go to Node.js, and download the version of Node.js that's applicable to your system. Actually, if you've just followed the step-by-step -step instructions that I've given you, you should not be able to get these errors. The more likely thing to happen is you get some other unique error. Here's the thing, don't panic. Copy the error message, paste it on either Google or Stack Overflow, and find the solution that's suggested by the people over there. You'll probably get it working in no time. Although it may take quite some time, eventually you'll get a message that the ingestion is complete. Once the ingestion is complete, you go to the next step where you're going to run the command npm run dev. Just copy that command, paste it here. And that will spin up the PDF chat app on local port 3000. So just copy that URL and open it in your browser. Once again, there's a problem with access. So you'll have to run the command as an admin. Add sudo to the npm run dev command. It will prompt you for your password. You just input your password. And that will start the chatbot on localhost 3000. Copy that URL, go to your browser, paste that URL and run it. You'll get a front end that looks something like this. So all you have to do is ask the question to the chatbot. So for example, what is memorable about the book held at me. It will take a bit of time as it spins and spins and ask questions. After some time, you'll get back the rest from the book. Kent Hatu is memorable for its powerful message about resilience, determination, and self-belief. The author shares his personal experience challenges such as overcoming his fears of water, graduating birds at the top of his class, and his name. Wow, it's actually quite accurate. As you can see, what this GPT-4 chatbot app does is that it pulls quotes from the different books, which are known as vectors, and then integrates them into a coherent response. Just like that, you have a GPT-4 chatbot app that you can use to chat with huge, large documents. Doesn't matter how many pages, doesn't matter how many books, the more the books, of course, the longer it takes, but it works and it works and it works. All right. Now that you have the chatbot set up, what are some of the use cases that you can do it? If you're someone who likes journaling, then what you can do is that you can export your journal notes in text or PDF version, then copy those journal notes and place them in the docs document, query them appropriately and get insights from them. Another use case is you can download a bunch of PDFs about a topic that you're interested in from the internet and use the GPT-4 chatbot app to understand the document. What this does is that it completely eliminates the problem of GPT-4 hallucination. To get the most out of this PDF chatbot app, remember to experiment as much as possible. If you'd like to get much more tips and insights on how you can integrate AI into your life, subscribe. Till next time, stay safe.